All right, so what tune are we working on today? Giant Steps? Uh, why do you want to learn Giant Steps? Why can't people just learn something normal? back to another lesson in the Walking Jazz Standard series. In this lesson we'll be looking at the famous John Coltrane tune, Giant Steps. Allegedly, Coltrane wrote the chord changes to Giant Steps first, worked on them for six months, and then took it into the recording studio for his band to learn the first day. His band members received the chart on the day of the recording in 1960. This is evident in Tommy Flanagan's nervous sounding piano solo on the original recording. If you haven't heard it, make sure you take a listen after this video. Before we get into the walking of giant steps, let's first take a quick look at the form. Giant Steps is a fast bebop tune, 16 bars in length. It's characterized by its unusual chord progression, which cycles through three different key centers all of which are a major third apart. These key centers are B major, E flat major, and G major. The form starts with a quick cycle through these key centers. B major 7, then D7, setting up for G major 7 in the next bar, and B flat 7, setting up for E flat major 7 in bar 3. The same thing happens again in bars 5 to 6, this time starting on G major 7 and returning to the starting key with B major 7. This quick succession of chords in bars 1 to 2 and 5 to 6 is known as Coltrane changes. The rest of the form is made up entirely of major 251 chord progressions that cycle through the three key centers. Feel free to pause the video or go back and watch this section again to familiarize yourself with the structure of the form before moving on to the exercises. Since the chord changes to giant steps are unconventional, it's worth taking the time to become familiar with how the chords really sound. For the first exercise, we'll be playing the root notes of each chord as long notes. This will help you to hear the real sound of the progression. Contrary to the title of the tune, you don't need to take giant steps in order to play giant steps. For the next exercise, we'll be playing a walking bass line in just one position on the bass neck. The bass line I have prepared for this lesson utilizes the open strings and the first four frets of the bass neck. Once you're comfortable in this position, try walking the changes in a different area on the bass neck.
chord progression itself isn't that difficult. The difficulty comes when the tempo gets ramped up. By far, the hardest parts to walk are the Coltrane changes in bars 1 to 2 and bars 5 to 6. I wrote out some of my favourite walking lines over these sections and incorporated them into the next exercise. I would encourage you to take the time to write out your own lines over these difficult bits and to work on them on your own. To be honest, once you've mastered those four bars, the rest of the tune is fairly simple. That's all we have time for in this lesson. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, as always, please feel free to leave me a comment. Until the next lesson, take care.